What's going on guys? I hope everyone's doing well. So it's been a while since I've done any type of content on the cargo trailer and today it is getting probably the most extreme modification that I can do to it and that is one that's going to also give me a little bit more practical use out of it especially down here in South Texas and with the trailer being all black. So we're going to go out to the trailer, we're going to hitch it up and take it to Ron Hoover RV and Marine where it is going to receive a 15,500 BTU air conditioner on its roof. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right guys, so I know a lot of people are gonna be curious as to why I'm putting such a large air conditioning unit on top of the cargo trailer. And the reason for that is because it does not have very much insulation. Now I could go through the process of doing what some other people have done when they convert their cargo trailer into an RV, but I'm not trying to do that. What I'm mainly trying to do is make it more comfortable on the inside while I'm doing some type of a project in there. I'm not looking to live or to camp out inside of this trailer. It's mainly if I'm going out on site, if I'm doing some type of carpentry project, if I'm going to do work on the RV with it, if I'm going to be hauling something, if I'm going to be carrying anything in the back, and I'm going to be spending any time inside of the back of the cargo trailer, I'd like it to be a comfortable space. So I have an opportunity to work with my sponsor, E-Trailer, and test out a relatively new air conditioning system on the market from Furion. A lot of folks probably have heard the Furion name if you are into RV. If you have a new RV, it's likely some product inside of your RV is a Furion product, whether or not it's your stove, whether it's your TV, or some other piece of electronics inside of your RV, or even your 30 or 50 amp connection on the outside. Furion makes a lot of components for RVs, and they've just recently gotten into making air conditioning units for them as well. So eTrailer has put multiple videos together already comparing the Furion unit it to other models of air conditioning units that people might look at on the market. And the Furion air conditioning units are supposed to perform pretty dang well. They're supposed to be a little bit quieter and perform a little bit more efficiently than some of its competition. And the reason why I've gone to such a large system, again, is because the trailer is not well insulated. If I'm going to be in there doing any type of a project and I have the AC running, it's going to be combating the fact that there's not a lot of insulation. So if it's a really hot day, Day, if it's 110 degrees outside, the trailer is going to heat up rather quickly on the inside, and I'm going to need a system that's large enough to kind of cool it down enough to be tolerable while I'm in there working. And I believe that this Furion system is going to do it. Now, of course, the trailer does not have any type of a ducted system, so it's not going to be ducted throughout, which I won't need simply because it's one large space. But I think proper placement of this system with its ability to kind of redirect the airflow to different areas is going to work out really well. But we'll find out after we get it installed and we start testing it to see how well it works. Okay, so something I had planned to do last time I was out here and before I emptied out the cargo trailer was to check my hull gauge to see exactly what the weight was on it versus the way safe hitch that I have. So I'm gonna drop the trailer down onto the way safe hitch and see what the reading is on the way safe hitch, then compare it to what the tongue weight reading is on the hull gauge. So I'm gonna open that up and say ready. It says don't bump the vehicle. So it should be connecting to it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. Okay, so the way safe hitch is reading right under 500 pounds, and the hull gauge is also reading right under 500 pounds. That is really cool. They are both almost dead on accurate.
So this is the insulation that I put up top and it's just held in place with some screws. They're gonna drop this down. I want them to mount the AC unit at about the midpoint right here above the axles. It doesn't need to be too far towards the back. It weighs about 100 pounds, so centering it right above the axles is the smartest thing to do. They're gonna run a wire, make it look really nice and pretty, to a jack that goes to the outside that gives me the ability to plug this into a generator. So once that's done, I'll have access there. Now as far as the vent fans that I showed you in a previous video, we're gonna space those out kind of evenly across the top, and that'll just help ventilate hot air out when the trailer's not in use, and that's gonna come in really handy as well. So this is the inside, this is the workbench that I've set up. So that's essentially what we're planning on doing. And here are the ultrafab solar vents that will be placed on essentially the, the four corners of the trailer. And this will just help vent hot air out when nobody's inside the trailer, it's not being used. So have a little bit of a mesh screen here that will go underneath them and this is to prevent bugs or anything from getting in which is really nice and then also some people asked if i needed to drill holes in the bottom to allow the air to come in and that's what these little side vents as well as the other vent in the front corner over there are going to be able to do they'll allow the air to actually come back in and here is the furion air conditioning system that'll be going in again 15,500 btu Gotta admit, it's one of the more attractive looking air conditioner models on the market. This is very cool. What do you think it weighs, about 80 pounds? Not even 80? And you guys remember Nick? What's going on, buddy? How's it going? Well, it's good to see you, brother. Yes, Everything's going good. All right, Adam. So this is Adam. He is one of their technicians here at Ron Hoover, RV and Marine in Corpus. And you do a lot of air conditioning systems here, don't you? Yes. I actually saw one in a box over here in the corner. Looks like that's going to be going on something. So this is going to be going right above the axles, mm -hmm. right? And then what's the, what's the plan as far as routing? So um, we're going to go ahead and cut the hole, 14 by 14 hole. And we're going to go ahead and run the Romex. Then uh, run it against the wall and come out to the wall. And we're going to put an uh, adapter connector, 120 adapter connector, so that way you can plug your generator or any regular cord that you want. Okay. So basically, he's going to run the wiring loom coming down the side. We've decided to put the outside connection right around this area here. That way the generator could be right outside of the wall and it's not going to be as loud on the inside. they got to cut a 14 by 14 inch hole and I think even do a little bit of bracing or reinforcement there because I don't yeah. think there's anything there. For your ceiling assembly, so that way it uh, grabs onto your ceiling assembly and makes it get sealed. Gotcha. So essentially, they need to just reinforce the area where the, where the AC is going to go, and it gives them the ability to attach it in place and clamp on so it doesn't ever move or have the possibility of shifting or coming off. Very cool. Well, I look forward to getting it back. I'm not going to film the process of them doing this simply because this is a, an active shop and they're doing a lot of work in here, and, and I really don't want to get in their way. But once we're done, we'll do a complete overview of what was done, how it was done, and if this is something that we'd recommend you do to your cargo trailer or even, you know, if you need to work on your RV and you want to upgrade your air conditioning system or add one to the front, this gives you an option for that. Anyways, guys, we will be back once this is all wrapped up. All right, guys, so you may be wondering why I'm not videoing the entire installation process step by step. And the reason why I'm not doing it is because I'm trying to be courteous to the dealership. They got me in there to get my trailer worked on to get this process started. And I didn't feel it was necessary to rush them and have a camera over the shoulder of their installer the entire time. Now, they have several other RVs and boats that they're working on. And the technician is going to jump from one project to another project to another project. And again, I didn't want to make Make them feel uncomfortable like they had to just focus on this specific project that I'm trying to do. So it was really done as a courtesy to them and I understand that they are trying to run a business. That being said, I really like how they asked a lot of questions during this process of determining where the unit was going to go, where they wanted the plug to go, how I wanted the wires to be ran. They basically asked me every question to make sure that the install went the way I wanted it to go, and I really appreciate that about the guys at Ron Hoover. Anyways guys, if you haven't had a chance now is a great time to subscribe to my channel. The next video will go over what the installation looks like, we'll go over how it was done, and the performance of the system in different conditions. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.